Hello, welcome to the West Ham Way YouTube. Myself, Mark Carlaw, and Mr. Riley Finch. Riley Skamaka, Jan Lucas Skamaka, isn't it? Um, he's now. So, yeah. It looks like that deal is almost done now. So the, the update we've had from ex WHU employee is that uh, a deal has now been agreed between both clubs. Finances have all been agreed, and I believe personal terms now, are, apart from some small little niggles, things to tidy up, are there, and the players due to fly over for a medical. I think tomorrow. Mm. Mate, how do you feel about it? Are you pleased? Because we did have a chat about this before, and I think you were quite excited about Skamaka. I'm still very excited about him. Um, I think the, the best asset of Skamaka is his interplay. He's really good at bringing in uh, for Sasulo, uh, I think is how you pronounce it. Mm, uh, he's yeah. really good at bringing sort of like the wingers in the midfield into the game. Like if you actually watch him, he does these like cheeky little flicks, and uh, he's, he's got really good sort of uh, passing vision, he, like sort of on the move. Like he's really quick on the ball when it comes mm. to passing and bringing in our wingers and our midfielders. And that is something that's going to be really, really good for us because, you know, we always like to get uh, sort of Bowen on the ball. Mm. You know, I, I think Broja probably suits the team a little bit more. So Skamak is going to be uh, either he has to adapt to us or we have to adapt to him. But um, either way, yes, yeah, absolutely massive. I mean, if you told me uh, that, you know, the two year, almost two year wait for a striker would end in Skamaka, then I'd be very happy to wait two years for that because, yeah, you know, he's, he's, you know, been linked with Juventus, Arsenal, PSG. This is an absolutely top, top striker, 23 years of age. And I think 30 million is a pretty generous fee for him as well. Uh, yeah. I know it's like 5 million add ons as well. But um, yeah, I mean, I expect minimum 15 goals for him this season, to be honest. I yeah. think he, he is that kind of player that he will just score. I agree. I mean, I've, I've been looking up on the player more now. Now, obviously, as it's gained a bit of momentum, trying to understand him a bit better. So it, you're right. I think I think he's averages about 15 goals a season. If you look at the last mm. three years, he's done. He's a very good, you know, good goal scorer, which is something we desperately need. One thing I really like about him as well is that he shot the way he gets a shot away so fast. He's got a real knack of taking the ball down. Mm. And firing a shot at goal incredibly quick and a sledgehammer of a shot at that, oh, mate. Unbelievable. And it's, it's, and it, it, it breaks hands. Yeah, honestly. Mm. I mean, and he's six foot five. Like, he's mm. really big. He's a lump and he's and he very good in the air. So, mm. um, I mean, if you think about West Ham and especially as we're, you know, notoriously known for very good deliveries of, you know, from crosses and that's how we have been. Our set pieces have been great. To so have a player of that size and someone that's got that kind of finish that can put the ball away, I've, I'm really excited by it. And, like you say, the fact that he's been he's, the, player, the clubs he's been linked with before, and the, you know they've been after him. You just think, I think we have a real special player on our hands here. Yeah, I mean, you know, theoretically, it could be our striker for the next 10, 12 years. You know, so mm. twenty three years of age is very young. You know, that's mm. second mm. price age. Yeah, um, absolutely. For him to be, so he's only going to get better. He's only going to get more potential. Mm. Um, you know, obviously there are worries about with the price tag, how much pressure that that's going to be on him. And you know, mm. the issue we had with Hilaire is we didn't play to his strengths. Absolutely, so, yeah. You know, we really need to make sure that uh, you know Skamaka is going to be able to actually integrate to our system, mm. or that we just integrate to the way he plays. Um, but yeah, also which is really interesting about him is, like I said, he's really technically gifted. Like mm. he's he's really good at sort of like doing like little back heels and uh, like flying volleys and overhead kicks and stuff. Like he's he throws himself about really well for a six foot five bloke. Like he's yeah, not a lump. Yeah. He honestly, he really does have that kind of like little bit of finesse about him. Yeah. Uh, and it, his passing is really exciting to me. That's, that's the main part of his game besides obviously his shooting mm, that I think mm. is going to be a big asset for us. You know, if you look at Brozier, the way he sort of is able to knock, knock down the ball and keep it glued to his foot, that's mm. the biggest asset for him in terms of helping the team go forward. But for, yeah. Smack, for me, it's going to be those play the ball into him and he's going to, do those quick little flicks to get it to Bowen or Ben Rama or Lanzini in the 10 spot. Um, mm -hmm. And he knows where the goal is, you know, how long we waiting to see something like that. And I, I, know, I can't right. lie, you know, this deal has only gotten more exciting by watching Antonio in pre-season because he's just really not looked at. I love Antonio. I absolutely love him. Yeah. I think he's probably the most overhated player at West Ham and undeservingly so. Mm. But, you know, you can't defend him all the time if he's missing those kind of chances, like we have to be putting away some of the chances that he's been given, you yeah. know, and no doubt in my mind that Skamak is going to be putting those uh, in week in, week out. So mm. yeah, really mm. exciting for me. Um, considering that some of the people we linked at the start of the window was like, uh, Berrett and Diaz, Emmanuel Dennis, and now we've gone on someone like Skamaka and Brogia. Yes. It's, yeah. It's a huge coup for the club for sure. Absolutely. And you're right. I mean, you're glad you brought that up regarding Antonio, actually. I mean, 
I'm concerned about him at the moment. I mean, I've got the preseason. I mean, he's, he's looked really poor. I, I would say. I mean, I, and I'm not just saying his overall play, but I mean generally he's finishing. I'm just. Yeah. He gets a bit exhausting with it. I get a bit fed up with it now. Really. I mean, at the end of the day, he's he's he he should be able. To, he should be practicing enough. He should be able to now hold his head and put the ball away. I mean. He missed, he's missed a good few sitters in these preseason mm. games. Um, and, you know, one against Luton, one on one with a keeper. And it was really badly taken. He just really seems bad. like it is, it is worrying, you know. And I know, right, you know, you're right. We've got Skamaka coming in, but you start to worry about Antonio's future now, really. I mean, cause, because Moyes is ruthless. We know that. He's very particular. He's, he's going to, he has got no sentimental value to any player. He's not just going to keep a player playing just because he likes him and they've been here for a while. If he's not good enough, he'll get rid of him. And you do kind of start to think now, if we've got someone like Skamaka coming in, where's this going to leave Antonio? Don't get me wrong, I can't see him being moved on. No, I just think he's going to be a bit of a bit part player now, I think. And I can, and he's not doing himself any favours this pre season at the end of the day. I mean, he's just not, I mean, he's not putting the ball away. And it's just, it is frustrating. Another yeah. thing as well, mate, you touched on was Brozier. So, What's your thoughts on Brosian now? Do you do you see that the door closes and closes now on that deal? Do you think there's that that's no way, or do you think no West Ham will still? I can see West Ham bringing him in as well. What, what do you reckon? Well, it's interesting, isn't it? Because you know you, you touch on Antonio there, and if we were to sort of say to him, maybe you're going to be playing on the wing this season, mm. then we would need a backup striker. And if we were to get someone like Brosian in on a loan deal, I think yeah. that'd be quite advantageous. You know, obviously, I think if we were to do a loan deal, we shouldn't do a blind loan. We should do. Uh, you know, maybe like a little uh, sort of even what you said uh, in a couple of videos ago, like just first priority, you know, set a price yeah. tag for him and we get first priorities whether we want to buy him or not. Mm -hmm. But then I'm also thinking to myself, you know, do we really need him? Like, is he going to and is he going to be happy sat on the bench at West Ham when he could be sat at the bench at Chelsea? Yeah. So that would mean to me that we have to either buy him, which yeah. wouldn't make any sense if we just splash 30.5 million on um, Skamaka. Mm. Or, you know, do we wait till next season to buy him? Uh, for me, I think, you know, keep Antonio as a backup striker um, yeah. and hopefully he'll come good. And then now if, if Kamaka is the guy that we got over the line, we keep him. And then, you know, obviously like the, the depth at a striker to have Brozier and Skamaka would be unbelievable. I mean, you know, mm. Mm. You, you're losing a game or, you know, you want to rest the player and you bring in someone like Brozier. That would be incredible. But... I just don't really see us being able to pull that off, considering we still need a left back, a midfielder, yeah. maybe a potential winger now as well with uh, Lingard sort of snubbing us. Uh, and then obviously we're just about to buy a striker and potentially a centre back as well is what we're looking at. So yeah, absolutely. I just think, I just think it'd be too much to think keep Antonio in the number nine position. And uh, yeah, I mean with Smacker, do you? It's sort of a weird, weird question, but he's always worn quite funky numbers. I think he's number ninety-one at Sassuolo. <laughs> what yeah, number is yeah. he at West Ham? I know, it's like 108 or something. I don't know. I've not yeah, it's so weird. He's quite a strange, and he looks he looks a real character. What's mm. quite good as well, I quite like, is that when you read the reports of from the you know um, in Italy, the player, he's really well liked as well as a person. Like he's well known to be a, a decent guy because um, he looks quite. He, he's got that sort of an out of it. Reminds me of that that kind of attitude when you watch him play. But apparently, really he's watch, a, meet him in a dark alley, alley, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he looks like a monster, doesn't he? Like, he looks yeah. like Jesus Christ. He's got tattoos over his neck, and you think, Christ. But yeah, I I'm excited. I mean, I, I mean, we can't not be, can we? Really? I mean, mm. I I'll be honest. I, I was, I wanted Brozier. That was kind of my yeah. number one. I think because the fact he's got Premier League experience. And I mean, I mean, we should touch on that quickly as well. I mean, when you think about the situation with Brozier and Chelsea now, obviously they've made life quite difficult for us in in not being able to sign him, which is fair enough. I mean, then he's their player. If they don't want to yeah. sign him, that's fine. But then where does that leave them for Rice? Because it's kind of done great for the relationship because West Ham have been working very hard to try and get a deal done. I think we offered him a very, very good deal in terms of, I think we offered £25 million in cash up front. Um, the player has told Chelsea he wants to leave because he wants first team football. You'd have thought, him, I mean, I would have thought that Chelsea might have been thinking, well, if we get on with West Ham, let's do them a deal. But I maybe would have even done a bit of a gentleman's agreement and say, look, this is the deal. We'll sell you Broja, but we're getting, we want first dibs on Rice next year or something. But the fact that's not happening, yeah, it does kind of make you question, um, you know, where, how the things we, you know, we're not going to make life easy for them. Surely not, you know, if, if they do come calling for, for Rice in the future, you think? Yeah, I mean, it's similar to what happened with uh, Liverpool and Fulham in in the way that uh, Liverpool loaned that Nico Williams to Fulham, and the kind of agreement was that uh, when the next transfer winner came about, they'd be able mm. to get first dibs on Fabio Carvalho. 
So and and they did and they signed him. So yeah, yeah that's that's that, I don't understand what you're saying, but um, I, I think they they kind of know that we're not going to make it easy for Rice anyway. So yeah, I don't really yeah. know if that's going to be in their mindset. Um, so, yeah, yeah. And I I feel like they know that no matter how much they offer, we're probably not going to accept a Rice offer. No. Um, and as of right now. I don't know. I don't think that's in their thinking. But again, like you say, it doesn't really make much sense because if you want to get rid of the player, like, you know, let's say they loan him out to us. What's the mm. point in that? You get no money up front, no money to spend. Yes, you get yeah. him next season. But if he doesn't want to be at the club and you don't really rate him as a striker currently, yeah. then you might as well just move him on. So I don't yeah. know. Why. Maybe it's because we're a rival, possibly. I mean, no, I don't really. know. I, I, I think it's, it's notorious, isn't it, Chelsea? They're, they're, I think they're notoriously very difficult to deal with. They've got this a yeah. bit of an obsession with players like that they, they bring up or whatever, and they always want these buyback options and yeah I don't like they don't I don't think they ever like letting players go but at the end of the day they're a very very rich football club I mean that's just life you're gonna have to just get over that you could you know they just seem to have a bit of an arrogance I think about them Chelsea they just don't really want to let anyone go and if they do there's always these very strong stipulations in the deal that basically they're still effectively partly a Chelsea player like well we can buy them back anytime we want and it's a mm. bit West Ham don't want that yeah. um so I don't know. I'd be quite interested to see what X's take on it is. I mean, I know he's going to provide some updates, but I, I do look forward to hearing where we are with the Brozier deal. Is that it? Will we close the door on it? I doubt we have. I don't think we'd have been after him for all this time and him being a top target then to just go, actually, no, we're not bothered now. I'd still like to think that we are in for him still. And we're thinking, like you say, maybe they're thinking, well, I'll tell you what, we'll do a loan for the season mm. and bed him in that way. And then with the view that we might try to bring is him in. Is he going to be happy with that, though? Like, is he going to be, if he doesn't want to sit on the bench at Chelsea, why would he want to sit on the bench at West Ham? You know, I, True. At, at least at least if he comes in for fringe games, he'll be coming in for fringe games in the Champions League. If he's at West Ham, he'll yeah. coming fringe games in the conference. So, I, mm. I don't know. It doesn't make sense. Alone makes sense for nobody, in my eyes. It doesn't make sense for West Ham. It doesn't make sense mm. for Chelsea. And it definitely doesn't make sense for Brozier. So, either move him on or, you know, and I think the door has closed considering we've just bought Skamaka. I just, It'd be a dream, but I honestly just cannot see us acquiring both of those players this window. No, no, no I, think, I, think that's you're right. sure. I think but, you're right. I mean, at the end of the day, we're not in a position where we can bring in top players to effectively be back up. We're, we're not that we're not in that realm yet. When that that's the realms of City, Liverpool, and Chelsea, yeah. where they can kind of because they always got that ca- carrot to dangle and go, Yeah, but you're gonna win silverware here, you're gonna be playing in the Champions League. We we can't dangle that carrot, mm. um, unfortunately. So you're right. I do think that uh, my gut, my gut tells me that this is probably closing the door on the Brozier for now. I'm, get, I'm guessing that's the case. But yeah, it'd be interesting. But yeah, Skamaka, mate, I'm absolutely buzzing. Absolutely, mate. I mean, it'd be great to see him sort of uh, play his first game for the club. I just really hope that after all of this, it does get agreed. I mean, I can't see there being any snags, but you mm. know. Um, I it's don't know. Stand, mate. And also, yeah, it and also, we do know he'll come and get injured on, in the first day. So that, you know, we've also we'll have to wait for him to recover from his injury until we see him actually play. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he'll he'll probably end up sort of like headbutting a door in a rush green and end up injuring his head. <laughs> yeah. He's like six foot nine, uh, yeah, and, and he'll be out for like twelve months. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's encouraging, isn't it? You know, considering the names we were being linked with at the start of the window, like Berrett and Diaz, um, and also yeah. uh, Manuel Dennis, to come out with a player like. Uh, Skamaka and even like over the last it's been a very long search for a striker for Moyes um, mm. and he's narrowed it down to Skamaka and Brozier I think Skamaka was a Newman uh, yeah like he highlighted the player so again it's great to see Newman uh, getting some some credit and obviously you know the impact he's had at the club is clearly quite good because uh, uh, Kostic as well was a Newman sort of recommendation yes. um, and I think was um, was Downs a re- uh, Newman recommendation as well was that a guy I, i'm not sure i don't know i don't know the route from downs i'm not, I'm not overly sure I, yeah yeah I'm not, i don't know where that came from the downs one because it was i know that obviously he was looking to go to palace wasn't he um, yeah. and i think that was looking odds on that was where it was happening i think the, the deal stalled and we just went in got yeah. it done um and which is miraculous for west ham to get a deal done in 24 yeah. hours i've never heard i'm heard of so that was brilliant i mean i'm really pleased with the business so far i mean i know mm. we all get a little bit impatient sometimes which is understandable but no, I mean, Skimakas excites me and I think there's more to come. But uh, yeah, and as you say, I'm touching on Newman. I think he seems to be doing a good job. I think he's, you know, finally we're starting to see a bit of payback from getting him in now because I think totally. we had him in for January, didn't we? And we we're all very disappointed. So no, I'm, I'm, I'm well placed. Yep, Skimakas are West Ham, mate. Let's see it happen. Exactly. Cheers, mate. Thanks everyone for watching.